Right, you're all set. Okay, so I'm um, gonna call the Finance Committee meeting of June 1st, 2021 to order at 2.05 p.m. And uh, welcome everybody um, who's here from the committee and staff and uh, who's here in the audience as attendees. And uh, this meeting is uh, being held virtually. Um, it is pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, General Law, Chapter 38, Section 18. Um, and um, as required, we, I will ask each member of the committee to acknowledge that, uh, as I say their name, that they are here and then we will know that they can hear me and we will know that we can hear them. Uh, so I'll start with Dorothy Pam. Dorothy? Yes, yes, here I am. Can you acknowledge your presence? Uh, Jane yes, Scheffler? I'm present. Jane? Yeah, I think you, um, Pat D'Angelis. Present. Uh, Bob Hegner. Here. Bernie Kubiak. Present. Uh, Lynn Griesmer. Present. Lynn. Present. Yes, Kathy Shannon. Here, um, Andy, sometimes your voice is breaking up a little, um, but here. Huh, it's on the computer that has direct wired connection. I'm not even using Wi Fi to get to it. Still having problems? Better. best. Um, I think that Lynn wanted to say something um, at the beginning of the meeting before we actually get into the agenda itself. So Lynn? Um, I'm going to say this now and then I'd like I will repeat it at our meeting on June 7th. Uh, we would like to extend an apology to the Community Safety Working Group for leaving them in the attendees as long as we did. Having said that, I do want people to know that I had sent them an email 24 hours in advance that told them how the meeting was going to proceed. But nevertheless, two hours was a very long time. And so please accept our apology. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And um, I, um, also extend my apology for being the one who was chairing and not, rec and not uh, realizing how long it was going on um, following the process that had been agreed, but not being sensitive to changing the process. So I also extend my apologies again, but need to get onto the business of the day, which is to um, go through the budget um, and to, um, because we have to make a recommendation and tomorrow's the day by which we have to make a recommendation on the budget. So I'm gonna ask um, Sean, if, if he has it available, to put up the um, first of two proposed orders that um, really are, part, are, are the core of what it is that we are recommending. And, um, Order 2206, which I think is the um, number for the uh, operating budget. Do you have that, Sean? Or yeah. Do you, do you um, can you see it? It's yes, and you're in exactly the right view of it. So um, leave it there and Go, go down a little bit because um, we can 
Okay, stop. Um, so what we're uh, being asked to do um, is consider an appropriation and transfer order for the operating budget in the amount of $69,707,427 as indicated. And uh, the reason I wanted this on the screen as the first item is that uh, there are parts of it that may not require any discussion today and that we just agree are, um, we can accept. And I want to try and go through those first, which means I'm going to put off the town operating budget for a moment, that line, it's the fourth line, and go through the other lines and see um, if there is any discussion that needs to take place on other line items as I call them out. And uh, if not, then we um, can uh, just focus on the town operating budget, the fourth line. So uh, are there any, is there anybody have anything to say about retirement assessments the regional lockup assessment or the proposed allocation to other post-employment benefits. And if I don't see anybody's hand being raised, then I will assume that we can just uh, proceed and go through to the next line. So seeing no request for discussion, I'm going to assume that um, those are items that do not require discussion today. Um, library services or elementary schools. Again, I'm looking for raised hands. <clears throat> seeing none. Um, then I'll go to the question of debt service and the enter in the four enterprise funds. I believe Dorothy may have had her hand up on library and elementary school. Oh, oh it's funny because it didn't appear on my screen, but thank you, Dorothy. Actually, it was on regional. I thought you were going to go in order regional lockup assessment. And I was curious to know whether that related to our share. Um, I'm sorry, Dorothy, we didn't, I didn't hear the whole question. Question on regional lockup assessment. Is that because we used it that much or because we just get a share whether we use it or not? I, Sonia, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe it's just a allocation, um, an assessment that we pay a, a portion of. It's not based on actual usage. Um, but is that right, Sonia? Correct. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Good. I believe we got the debt service and Kathy has her hand up. Kathy, I, I now have my participant list correct so I can see it, but Kathy, go okay, ahead. Um, I, I don't really have a question on the elementary school line, the way it's presented, but I'm um, thinking in our report, it would be useful to have the expected amount that is being allocated to our schools from the Recovery American Recovery Act. So, so, so the public and the bit larger council knows there's additional funds that will be supporting the schools. And I believe, Sean, that there's a, a decent estimate at this point that on what amount is going to the schools. So, um, Andy, is it okay if I respond to that? Yes, please um, do. So I'll, I can try to find a link. I haven't actually, so while the town has seen an update of what we're expected to receive from the, um, the American Rescue Plan, I haven't actually seen a revise, like a actual um, projection of what the schools are going to get. Um, there were some preliminary estimates that were put together, um, I think, over a month ago. So I can try to find the link 
that I think MMA put together um, around that. It may, it may be helpful to link that in the report. Um, and I can also check and see if there have been revised estimates on what the schools are going to get. And yeah, I just thought that was, it will be important so that people, I mean, there was a lot of concern that we're putting too much of a squeeze on the schools and there will be this, these additional resources. So if you can find a number that's our best guesstimate, I think it would be useful to put it in our report. Um, yeah, like I said, I'll take a look and see if I can find something on the MMA, MMA website because they did a forecast or a projection a while ago that had a bunch of different sources of federal aid um, and it broke it out between town and schools. And so I can, I think that's the most recent estimate of what the schools were going to get from um, the American Rescue Plan Act, unless something's come out in the, in the last day or two. Okay. And, and when you get it, um, you know, I've never been clear when I see the big numbers, whether that's a per year, I know we can get it for up to three years or whether that's a total. So just, um, yeah, it's a total. I mean, the number, the, the 11 million or so for the town is a total over three years. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Um, Going back to the other ones we raised, I asked just to make sure that we have no need for further discussion on debt service or any of the four enterprise funds. So, and seeing no hands raised, then we get back to the town operating budget itself. And, uh, I guess the next um, question that I have is regarding the town operating budget. Is there any questions right now that people have about anything having to do with conservation and development? Seeing no hands raised. If something comes up, you can bring it up later, but what I'm trying to do is just to see if we're down to talking about public safety and community services. So I'm gonna ask about the, um, the other two for the same purpose. Public works, anybody seeking discussion on any aspect of public works? in general government. Okay, seeing none, then as I said, if somebody comes up with something later, we can bring it back up, but I wanted to get to focusing on two. Lynn and Kathy, uh, Lynn first, since your hand went up first. Um, so on the community safety working group, community responders. Um, I want to start with the fact that the town manager on Thursday presented us with an alternative plan. And if possible, uh, could we find that part of the slide presentation, Sean, and put it up? And then let me mention that between Thursday when we met and Friday morning, we learned that Senator Joe Comerford has successfully placed in the budget $90,000 for community responders. And that is essentially equivalent to one four year uh, equivalent person, uh, at least the way I think we're estimating or thereabouts because I think it would include benefits. You, um, okay, I think you have the right page too. You do. That would include allowing us to go to either 4.0 up to 6.0 responders for five months, if I'm correct. Um, and then while there is discussion about further reductions to the police, I would prefer, and I, I want to word this by saying I would strongly prefer that we not tell the town manager where to find additional money, but basically ask the town manager that once the budget is passed, 
he seek additional money that would add yet another two positions to the responders. So that the total for this first year would be eight FTE responders for five or whatever months we can hire them. For. First of all, I'm just gonna say, I think it's going to be a challenge to hire these responders. We have not identified what the qualifications are yet. Um, but in you know, my quick guess that is gonna be something like psychologists and social workers, because they're the people who are more closely trained to this kind of work. Neither of my suggestions, either the money from the Senate uh, that we hope makes it through the conference committee, and we know that Mindy Dom will support that, or the additional money we're asking the town manager to find, none of that would be in substitute for the bottom line where the data gathering and analytics, the 250,000 or anything else, it would be merely to bring the number up to eight FTE responders for five months. I haven't made that into a motion. I was interested in other people's thoughts. Okay. Um, let's see if we can get back to Kathy, uh, were you wanting to be? Yeah. Get your hand up next. So. I do. So um, I have something to say that goes beyond what Lynn just said, but I was glad you said that, Lynn, first. Um, it provides a bigger context. So I think, um, number one, I think writing this up that the 90,000 is both good news and it increases, in theory, it increases the total revenue the town has. So we will have to figure out how we write that up because it's grant grant money. Um, and I think at some point it will be useful for Paul slash Sean, Sean for, for people to understand, to understand, as you just said, that this is a five month budget for responders because I wanna make sure that we have in FY23, we have the equivalent for a full year. So I would like to have um, a, a best guess on what this commitment will be in FY23 in, as part of this when we write it up, Andy, just so you know, we, we're gonna have to find that money also. So this year, and, and I'm not necessarily saying where it should come from. Um, so I, I just think it's important because we can do some things in this year for a variety of reasons. Um, so my, my other, I came prepared to talk, to use the wording we used last year um, when we uh, accepted the budget, but we recommended uh, that the approval of the budget the, uh, with the understanding that the town manager um, hold two positions in the police department. If we move to, there are th still three vacancies. So yes, Lynn, I understand what you're saying is it gives him the flexibility, what you're asking for, is it would give the flexibility to make that decision or find the money someplace else. Mm -hmm. I, I do think um, us writing up a sense of where you might get it, even if it's just one. And the I had come up with a motion that would have recommending that the this we had this first six months to assess data to get the system of, and then make that decision in January whether to release that money or not for either one or two, because I think um, it would be a mistake um, to fill all three positions, the vacancies. So I'm not saying it would be a mistake to fill any of them. So I would be interested in others. I have a draft motion that would do the way we did it last year, which was, um, if people remember, we didn't cut the budget. We, we accepted the budget with an understanding that the town manage, manager would hold one of these two, one or, and I'm saying one or two positions vacant. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I do understand, Lynn, that you're trying to not tie his hands and not send any signals. So I, I, I'm more comfortable with saying where it might come from. And that would still leave 
by January a decision on that's not where it's coming from. It's coming from someplace else. So I will stop talking now. But I did. I have a draft of what that wording would look like. Bernie. Yeah. Let me start. Uh, I'll put the disclaimer first. I'm very much a supporter of community response programs for a variety of reasons that go beyond the anti-racism piece of it. Having worked with folks with disabilities who's gotten themselves in trouble with cops throughout Western Massachusetts, I can tell you a community response program is preferable. That said, I have not seen any data that would support the level of staffing that was insisted on in the, uh, in the Community Safety Working Group's report. That's still coming. Uh, my guess, based on what I've experienced, based on putting together the South County um, uh, Emergency Medical Services, uh, based on looking at CAHOOTS and some other data, um, that <clears throat> if we have two-person teams on 24-7, that may, that may be sufficient. And that I don't think at this point in time, we have any information that the community response or responder program is gonna lessen the workload and the importance of the police to the point where we can take more positions away from the police. So I'm very much in favor of saying to Paul, um, if you have, as you staff this up, find the money anywhere you can, not necessarily take it from the police. We don't have that data. Um, if you look at CAHOOTS, um, they operate on $2.1 million a year. That's about 2% of the $66 million budget that the yeah, police department operates under. And they, um, they while well, they answer 20% of the calls, their actual impact on police operations is more like seven or 8%. So this is a complicated thing and we're gonna have to work through it. And I'd very much encourage uh, bringing that organization in to consult as well as whomever else you've been talking to. So um, I would be uh, hesitant to be prescriptive and say, take the money from the police department uh, because I don't think there's gonna be that much that can be taken from the police department. Um, and um, uh, look, again, looking at the good data. Um, and uh, uh, you know, I also think that that level of staffing that's proposed, the, the number of FTEs in the, in the community safety working group budget doesn't support that level, the level of staffing they think they're, they're asking for. So, you know, and I'd love, very much want to see this program succeed for a variety of reasons. But I think the proposal that Paul put together to kind of back into this and build data, build some experience is a good one. And uh, uh, again, I think we should be supportive, but not prescriptive. Thank you, uh, Bob. Yeah, I, I... I want to agree with with Lynn and Bernie that I don't think we should tie the manager's hands in terms of where the money should come from because everything's uh, in flux right now with with um, uh, we, well with, there's a number of things in flux and I think that the I think giving the manager the flexibility to find money where he can find it I, I think is a something I would certainly support that. I think, it, Kathy, it wasn't clear to me, I, I mean, I agree with the idea of increasing the number of Crest responders. It wasn't clear to me what the kind of practical um, look is for that. I mean, and from my opinion, I think we should try, if we can, to get at least one team uh, available 24-7 uh, in order to have that service be truly tested in terms of, you know, what's going to happen on the weekends and at night, uh, what's the demand going to be, et cetera, et cetera. And I think it would be very helpful if we could get that um, and have a commitment to at least have that going forward in FY23 so that we're not we're, we're signaling we're not going to pull the rug out after five months or six months, but we do have a, an ongoing commitment for at least, you know, you know, 18 months, 17, 18 months to really work out uh, the, you know, iron out all the problems with this, with this new service. So 
Uh, I don't know, Kathy, were, were you thinking um, sort of a full-time 24-7 presence? When I, when I talked about, um, Bob, I'm thinking similar to you, and I'm just, this budget that we're looking at right now looks very doable for FY22, especially if you add the other 90,000 in. Um, and Lynn talked about how you could get up to as many as eight. Um, when you say, what does that look for FY23? Suddenly we're not a five month budget, we're a 12 month budget. So I too would like to make sure if we start it, we can keep it going, um, that we're committed to it. And um, I just want to say that I, 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 Bernie, I'm agreeing in what Lynn said, I think we don't even know for sure that the people we would want to hire exist with the training we would like them to have. So we may need to um, cross train or get some community groups um, where we're, and we want this to succeed. So we want everybody we hire to be a really a good fit. And so then we also want to be able to go, no, go in to if it's five months, go into the next 12 months with, with that commitment. So I was more just saying, let's make sure we have the money. And I'll, when I look at our FY23 budget, it is really tight, really tight. Um, and I'll talk about that later with capital, but I wanna make sure that we are not making just a FY22 commitment. We're making a minimum of, uh, it, the equivalent of a year and a half here, you know, that getting it started and then running it. I, I would agree that it's going to take a year and a half to, to kind of suss through this and get a good idea what the what the program's capable of doing. My caution is not to go to two teams 24-7. If you look at Cahoots, they put up 31 hours of staffing. That's one that's uh, two team uh, team for 24 hours and then seven or eight hours of double double coverage and that's for a community that has 170,000 people so you, you, you know you're, you're going to want to watch how you build this thing and we're going to need some data and I know we're getting one year of data um, crunched for us uh, but I'm, I'm not convinced of that even that one year of data is sufficient it's going to have to be some practical experience here. yeah Bernie just to clarify I was suggesting we aim for one team 24-7. Um, yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, I would agree I would agree to build to that. Yeah. And the first couple of shifts would be those area, those uh, times of the day or the week when the data says suggests this is prime time. And then the, 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 the remaining coverage gets added on later. Okay. We have some other members of the committee who want to be uh recognized, so I want to try and get to the Dorothy. Uh, I just wanted to add my voice to uh, concern uh, about being able to carry it forward. Um, I agree it's better to learn how to walk before you try to run, and that a careful start is better than just rushing in and uh, getting yourself in trouble. So um, just want to, because I, I think that we have to make clear that and the town manager and, and the committees are doing their best to do this in a way which seems rational, clear, and doable, uh, and that is aiming for success. Uh, but concerns, I think uh, making the first team a little more robust might not be a bad idea. Um, so that's, that's my, my comment. Um, Sean, since you... Uh, did you have something as finance director that you want to add? Yeah, I was just going to sort of kind of echo what um, Dorothy said, which is if we were to create an eight-person program in FY22 and try to maintain that eight-person program in FY23, it would be a pretty large increase to the budget um, for FY23 that would take up resources from other places. Um, and that might be fine. I, I guess what I was going to say is it would be good to hear maybe a, a sort of a, what are the priorities for FY23? Because I'm thinking, you know, our, if we're gonna add this program and maintain eight in FY23, I, it's possible the recovery is stronger than expected and maybe it won't be an issue, but I could see it potentially um, impacting operating budgets, you know, more than what we've already projected where I think we already projected not being at two and a half percent, you know, could potentially come out of capital, but that would impact the ability to do the, the, the plan for the four building projects. So I guess, uh, 
you know, would be helpful to myself and I'm not sure if others, but would we kind of get a sense of priorities to where if the funding's there, we do it, but it, you know, how does this compare to other things? Um, because I'm just looking at just to maintain four, we're going to have to find 300 to 350,000 additional funds for FY23. If we're adding eight and the grant, the, the grant doesn't come back, you know, you can double that more or less. Um, and that's well more than what the, the municipal budget gets in a given year um, at two and a half percent. Um, so again, I'm just looking for how this, what are the priorities for this so that we can kind of make those decisions as we go forward. Paul, did you just? So I think it's important what Kathy and Dorothy are talking about and others as well about and to add on what Sean said is FY23 is really important to think about because it's we've always said it's not that hard to find the money in FY22, FY23, 24, 25 were the challenging years. And I think you need to make your recommendation based on what is going to happen in those out years. Secondly, I think what's really important for us to say that we want to follow the data. So if the data says we need two teams of people during certain times of, of the day, as opposed to, you know, people, you know, from midnight to 6 a.m. when there might, and, and having people sitting, sitting there and having maybe no calls. We want to look at when the calls come in that we're going to be allocating. So I think it's important to analyze this in a more, a little bit um, more substantive way over time as we get into the call data that will be analyzed by LEAP. We can look at it, not just the types of calls, but also when they come in, when the most likelihood is a time of year. Uh, we know we staff uh, appropriately for police and fire now based on our inherent knowledge about how the, how the season works during the course of the year. So we staff up at certain times and staff down at other times and we are able to take vacation. So I think, um, again, adding what others have said, being trying not to be prescriptive, but having the goal being very clear that the council wants to see, and the finance committee is recommending that the council establish this program. We want it to be successful, which I think we all are on in agreement uh, on that. Um, so, but again, the biggest challenge that we talk about regularly is how are we gonna you know, maintain this uh, going forward? And what it would mean is that the council today or whenever is saying, we find this to be a high priority and this is takes precedence over all other um, budget requests. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, I'm saving my own comments for later. Um, Lynn, I, the, I, there are a couple Please. of people who haven't heard them yet that I wanna hear from. Please go ahead and then I'll... Okay, because I know Jane has been had her hand up for a little bit. Jane? Still a problem. Now you seem to be frozen. Uh, uh. Sometimes when people turn their video off, the voice is less unstable, but not always. Okay, that Try it. Hmm. Um, I don't know if it'd be better to, if you're having problems with your Wi-Fi, could try calling in and uh, connecting that way too, because we certainly want to hear from you. Yeah, I'll do both. Okay, I'll ask uh, Pat to, uh, next, and then we can come back to Jane. Pat? Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm trying to understand. We have a $90,000 grant, which Lynn suggested um, we increase the FTEs by two, and that would give us six. Um, and then we were talking about two positions uh, more coming from the police department, which would give us the eight. 
And I'm assuming we're when we're talking about one team, we're talking about four people, which is originally in Paul's budget. I would like to see us recommend that there be a reduction in the police department. Um, I'm concerned. Um, it, it a lot hinge. I, I know the logical. <laughs> the conservative um, step is to uh, follow through uh, and not have eight people. My concern is that it's in terms of the definition of what an emergency is. We had white people in uh, wanted a new bridge, Station Road, because they were inconvenienced. It was an emergency because they had to run their car longer and therefore they were impacting climate which has got some reality except for the amount of time that they had to run their car it really didn't make much of a difference we funded a temporary bridge because it was an emergency and so i'm i'm just having when i and there we keep finding money to do kinds of things we don't fund we don't replace our ladder truck uh, that's an emergency, but we don't talk about it as if it's an emergency. So I'm having a hard time being logical and conservative. Uh, I want to see this program succeed. I think it will impact the police. I would like to see. Um, <laughs> I would like to see that happen. Um, and it's not because I disrespect the police. I'm, I'm sorry, I really don't have this logical basis, but we're making a mistake by not saying where the money has to come from. Um, and I, you know, I said this earlier today, I have a lot of respect for you, Paul. I know that you will do your best. I believe uh, in you and Sean and Sonia, uh, but I think that we need to do some directing and be a little impractical um, and um, take a risk. That's, that's kind of where I am. Mm -hmm. Andy, do you want to go ahead, please? Uh, yeah, I can go ahead with a couple of things. One is, is that uh, I think that we might be able to get some statistics from um, just our current calls to the police department to know what it is that uh, we have seen the nature of demand, the kind of demand, and whether there's any predictions that can be made from current experience. But one of the things that I am very concerned about, that I've been fairly consistent in saying this at council meeting last week and in the prior finance committee meeting, is that I think we would be making a big mistake if we cut the police department without being thoughtful about it and making sure that we have enough of a police presence to do response that police will still be required to do. And I bring up domestic violence because I had such a big investment in my prior career and because I emotionally have a strong investment in it. And um, I, don't agree with what was said in response to me on at the meeting on Monday. Uh, when it comes down to something that involves the word violence, um, there is no substitute um, to uh, people who are trained to deal with violence. And if you don't have enough response to have quick response and adequate response, um, that uh, it, it's a problem. So I, I, I think that we can reduce the police department. We have reduced the police department as we develop a crest program that's going to take up appropriate places from them. But I don't want to do it at the cost of jeopardizing the safety of anyone in the community, whether they'd be a domestic violence victim or any other kind of threat to um, violence or anything else that absolutely requires police presence. So 
I am uh, loath to uh, make precipitous cuts without a uh, real thoughtful approach. And that's where I really have to uh, rely on Paul to provide guidance on that and not make assumptions and impose uh, uh, our uh, views on his ability to manage a police department that's at least adequate to serve the most essential needs in the community. Um, so that was what my thought was. Jane, you had, you're back. Do you, uh, can you try again or, because you obviously. Uh, Jane, Jane, can you hear? Oh, well. Um, you might uh, contact Athena um, by e and see if she has any suggestions for you because she's pretty good at trying to help people solve problems. So why don't you and Athena see what you can do. Uh, Lynn, I'll take it back to you. Okay. So my logic for eight is uh, people don't work seven days a week. And if you want three shifts, you have to have a minimum of eight, and that's your 24-7. My second logic is we want to give this program the best opportunity to, to be successful. And I think you're four, it's just not enough to try it out. And I think it's going to be tough when we go to fund it a year from now. But if we as a council say this is a priority, then we have to put it as a priority. And finally, I really believe sending the message to our police by cutting more positions or freezing more positions is the wrong thing to do. That's what Northampton has done. They can't recruit good police officers and they're leaving in droves. If we want young BIPOC, new policemen to join our force, then let's stop sending this message. Thank you. Uh, Dorothy? I can't find the cursor to unmute half the time. Okay, um, this is, um, I, I agree with what Lynn said. But this is um, it, to kind of counter something you said, Andy, um, although I totally agree with you that we need a joint presence for many, many things. What we don't know from existing stats is we do not know how many people will call Cress who in the past have not called the police. I mean, there's just no way that we can possibly know that. Um, and so that and the, the dedicated number they were talking about, that's a, a truly new aspect of this which and we have to we have to see what it, how it plays out i mean I, no one can predict actually but we have to see if in fact there are a lot of people who will call this new service who would not have not in the past called police because of fear of, of what might happen thank you okay and thank you dorothy uh i think that it's a fair point because i don't think that current statistics can do more than give us at least you know, a preliminary direction, but it's not going to give us the real answer. You're, I think you're right. We need the experience of Crest itself. And the only thing that we have to rely on otherwise, uh, besides experience we gain, which will be the best, is what other communities have. Um, so, Kathy? Oh, Athena, did you have something? I, I just wanted to say I got a hold of Jane and she said that she just didn't have anything to add right now. So she's all set. Okay. Um, Jane, let us know if, if you have something more. Kathy, I'll go back to you then. Um, I will go back to, I will build off of what Lynn just said, if we need eight to run 
three shifts and cover seven days. You know, some of those shifts may not be need to be 27, may, may not be full to need to be a 24, 24 hour shift. Um, so I would really like Sean to Sean and company to be able to say, what does that look like if not this coming year, but what does that look like for FY23 in terms of what kind of budget we're talking about? Because I don't want to imagine a budget. Um, you know, so I, I do know that the last two or three years, even with um, the restricted revenues we've had because of uh, the budgeting we've produced, um, we come in under our budget every year. So we've had some revenue that we could reallocate. Um, if we can say that we uh, don't have to be quite as conservative, I just would, I don't wanna staff up by the end of FY22 and discover we can't support the people we're staffing up. Um, I could also see that some um, might not be there for the full five months they might be there for something less because when we put out our job description, we're not um, inundated with the perfect matches. It takes us some time to find the people we want to hire, you know, and I think we should be careful. You know, my, my only experience with starting up new programs with staff, with the kinds of people that haven't existed before, so we're um, building up is in the healthcare world when uh, in primary care, we brought in physician assistants and nurse practitioners. And we had to learn what they could do, what, the, what went off the doctor's schedule and people had to trust that they could do when we sent them out to the community. So, you know, so Lynn, if eight is our target, I think we should be explicit about it and we should have some sense, not just that we trust Paul will find the money somewhere. We have to some, have some sense that we can really be able to fund that. So when I talked about the, um, I didn't want to cut the police budget. I wanted to hold one or two positions until January just to secure the money. If we don't think we can do that because it sends the wrong message. Um, I understood the police chief to say it's going to take him time to fill those vacancies anyway. He's not filling them. And I wasn't saying all of them. Um, I'm not sure where else, where else we're looking. Um, I don't think we're looking easily at the school budget, at the DPW budget, at the fire department budget, at the people who work for Paul budget. Um, so I would just like some sense of um, money flowing in that we think we can realistically re reallocate. And, I'll stop talking here, but I did my, my, before this started, I asked if we're, when we're voting the budget, are we also voting the capital budget? Because I'm concerned already that the amount of debt we're taking on, because we said we can do all four buildings. Um, schools will just do an override. 3.4 million is what is in the FY22 budget for a schematic design for DPW and fire. That's an increase in FY23 of 200 to $250,000 a year in new debt service. So that's hitting this year we're talking about, um, which is already budgeted for just barely a 2% increase on operating budget. We've got a very tight, when you look forward, several years, the operating budget is really tight. And when health insurance doesn't come in at zero, which we were lucky this year, when it's back up to a one or 2%, if there are step increases, I just wanna make sure that we can get there um, because I don't wanna start and then stop in any way. I think that will, there's gonna be a learning curve and I think we need time to learn. So I would just like, my request is that we have a guesstimate of what this program would cost in FY23 with uh, us being told how, how, you, how one plans to do it. Um, yeah, that's it. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm quite liberal in the way I'm willing to spend money and federal government was fun because you could just deficit spend um, if you wanted to, but you can't as, as a local government. Um, so, so I would just like to know, and I think we have to look at the capital side when we say well, we're gonna have to look at, we can't commit to do everything and start spending the money and not have the money to spend. So we have to be thinking across 
not just FY22, but the impact of what decision we make in 22 and how it hits 23. Richard just said, we are bleeding into capital a little bit, but uh, Sean might have some way of uh, responding to the question as to if we did the borrowing that included the funds that are being proposed for schematic, and we'll come back and talk about the value of doing that a little bit later, uh, when would the uh, repayments start to affect the budget, when would first payments become due? Give me um, one minute to pull that up. Are you talking the borrowings for the design work? Yes. Yeah, give me one minute and I can pull that up for you. Okay, uh, we can come back to that. Um, Lynn, did you have something you wanna? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess the other point I just wanna add is every year we've been on the council, we have voted at least two million dollars to stabilization funds we've never asked where did that come from but if you ask what you're going to find is come from vacancies underspent budgets etc i feel we need to have more faith in our town manager and let him find the money but not send the message and so i really want to not lay it on the police but just say it to the town manager And I am worried about the next year, but you know what? We can only do what we can do at the moment. And if we don't launch, launch the program with one some successful parameters, then we have condemned it to failure. Okay, Bernie? It comes to mind is that scene in Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid where they jump off the cliff and on the way down, Sundance says, I can't swim. Um, but you frequently find yourself in those situations in municipal government, and it's just part of the show. Um, and I, I think that um, I, I think going forward, I think we'll be able to find, we'll be able to find the money. Maybe a struggle, it may be tight, but we'll find the money. The other thing I will say quite sincerely is I think, well, the community responders have been framed as a response to the police. We have to watch that because they're not a complete replacement for the police. They're a partial replacement for the police and they're gonna to have to work collaboratively with the police department. You look at the CAHOOTS data, I don't have it in front of me, so I'm working out of memory. About 11% of the CAHOOTS calls have to be backed up by the cops, especially around domestic disturbances because those are very dangerous situations. And I think Andy's, Andy's right with his his concerns about that. Andy, can I just respond to the debt question from before? Yes. Yeah, so the borrowings for the design engineering work, we have those as bond anticipation notes that would be paid once the project is completed or once the project is bonded out. So the DPW would start in FY23, sort of the DPW portion of that, and the fire station would start in FY25. So it, they would be temporary borrowings until the um, full project is complete. But that, John, and that could change as we you know, go forward, if this is approved, if we go forward, um, if there's a year where we could make a pay down on those, we potentially could factor that in. But right now they're projected to be paid um, with the rest of the project. But there, there's no payment on a temporary, because I saw the big jump up in debt service, and I assumed that we were paying down. It's yeah, for, for FY23, the jump is from the DPW portion of that. So the, again, the DPW, we're projecting the first initial payment to start in FY23. Again, that's these are best guesses because we don't know exactly when the DPW project's going to start and finish. Um, but the jump you saw for FY23 is related to the DPW portion. And uh, I don't think we can complete the discussion without uh, having some understanding of what the value is of having that work done on the schematic designs now. Uh -huh. 
do you want to talk about that now, Andy, or, or is that a hold that till later? Yeah, I mean, I think that we're, the problem is it's everything interlocks with each other because of, as I say, all dollars are fungible and um, you do go back and forth uh, on some topics. And I think that's as much as we're trying to contain it, it's uh, um, difficult to avoid it entirely. Uh, yeah, I mean, I could just say real quick, the, the reason why we're including that request as part of the FY22 budget is because until we get a really good design for both the fire station, the DPW and a cost estimate, um, it's hard to, these projections, these are just projections because we're, we're putting in estimates around them, but um, we need to have that sort of detailed schematic design, looking at the site, looking at the, um, doing an updated needs assessment with a budget in mind and also with the net zero in mind so that we know if these numbers are going to work for the community. Um, so that's why, you know, this is really the next step to get to the to DPW or fire stations to get this detailed level um, for the DPW, especially, but also for the fire station. Can you, can you do it without a location? I had always understood that a schematic without a location is hard to do. Right. So, we, I mean, we're anticipating when we ask for these funds, we're anticipating that we will have a location before they're used. For not, um, so I think the, the RFP for uh, a DPW location is, um, is it due this week, Paul? I think we, we were talking about, yeah. So the, we want to spend, we want to spend the money to do this schematic design until we have a location identified. You wouldn't uh, borrow money to fund it until you have the work right. to do. So it'd be an authorization, but it would not necessarily be borrowing, it's just being able, able to borrow if we're able right. to find the location. Right. Can I just build on this? Would we give Paul, if we're talking about discretion to make this work, would we give him the discretion to say, gee, I can't move forward on that because I need this money for something else. Because we've also asked him to do four buildings. I'm just, I don't want to tie hands if we're talking about flexibility and those numbers, they're big numbers. And if you look at the debt service, if we go forward, it's big. And I'm a little worried about the DPW site for fire. If we discover their contaminants, that there's a long cleanup on it because we haven't really looked into that. Guilford said you go down eight inches um, and it's pretty yucky. So I just would, you know, so I'm looking for not tying Paul's hands if we want to move forward with the other program to say that FY23 is feasible. Um, I'd like to know it's feasible. I'm totally for this program. <laughs> I just want it to be a health that, that we um, give it the resources to start and the resources to sustain it a year later. And we can, um, you know, I don't, if we're going to meet tomorrow, we can have those numbers for tomorrow, um, if that's what's needed to, for the committee to move forward on this. Yeah, I mean, this is hard, and so badly for, for Paul and you, Sean, in trying to figure it out entirely because we really don't know whether we're gonna be really successful in quickly hiring people uh, that we can then get into training to become community responders, or if it's gonna be more difficult to do that hiring. And I don't know how you know that until you actually get out there and try and do some advertising and hiring. So, seem to be at a uh, at a quandary. The, the in the last thing that I wanted to point out was is that uh, Lynn talked about how each year we have money that we can transfer to stabilization. Well, that's the money we were looking for to initially fund reparation, the reparation stabilization fund. So, Helen? My only point is, we, first of all, we haven't pledged all that money to reparations. We've only pledged equal to 
approximately $206,000. Second of all, my point is that there is flexibility in the budget that we don't see because we, thank God, are not the daily managers of the budget. But the financial people do see it. And it comes from a variety of different sources. So I'm, I'm trying to place faith in our uh, town manager and our financial people first, that they will do everything they can to find it. And second of all, if they can't, if they find they can't find it, yeah, they have to come back to us. So it's, it's basically putting management where management should be and um, policymaking where policymaking should be. Okay, so Dorothy, you're waving your hand, so I see that way. Okay. Um, you know, the police department has a police academy and um, these uh, Crest workers um, need perhaps some kind of uniform training, not just relevant background and character uh, aspects. And it's quite possible that one of our local community colleges could in fact develop a program um, of training um, for them. Um, so I, I, part of me, I want this to happen quickly, but part of me says, I don't know if you can do it that well quickly. I think you hire people and you train them. So they're not really you know, out there working 24 seven because they're being trained because in the police department, everybody's trained before they, they do things. Um, so I just putting that in is something else to think about. Good point. I, uh, community colleges have been very good about being fast at developing new programs when there's a need to do it. And I can see community responders that one of the colleges is going to say, hey, this is where there's demand now and we've got to start making that training available but we know it's gonna take a little bit of time to get going. I think that's one of the frustrations that uh, I can see that the community is gonna have and the community services working group is gonna have about uh, the program because I think once we've got our emotions invested in it, we wanna see it happen, but it's, there are, there are risks of going too fast. Lynn? Andy, do you want to start trying to move to motions or not? I think so, unless we think that um, there's that additional information from Sean is going to enhance conversation for tomorrow. Otherwise, I think we are getting to a point where it's appropriate to get to motions. So, if somebody could refresh my memory, I believe last year we did two different things on this. We, one, did a motion to pass the budget, and then separately, we did a motion where we made a certain request of the town manager. And Kathy, I think that's what you were trying to map out before. Um, I'm not asking for the motion that takes it from the police. I'd like to start it with taking it, you know, general. But could you just describe for us what we did last year? Okay, so what we did is, um, I won't re read the middle of the sentence that you don't want, Lynn. <laughs> it's, we recommended to the town council that the approval of the budget be made with the explicit understanding with the town manager that, and then we wrote out what our that was. And, um, and that, that would be in consultation with the town council. And, and what we did last time was having assessed alternative options of providing service and commuter responders. Um, so, and then we recommended that the result of that assessment be presented to us by, and we gave a date. You know, so we were, last time we were saying, come up with some options. Um, so we're approving the amount, the total budget with all the money, but leaving you, to come up with the options is what we had last time, but we gave them two slots to, we gave them two slots to work with. 
So this time that the, <laughs> with the explicit understanding that with the town manager that, and so what I had was that one to two of the current vacant positions be, be held until January, 2022 was the way I had done the draft. So this would have to have that wording with something else in it. You know, and, and just when Paul, Paul will know this better, but in terms of your, the way you had done it, it looked like the startup time was initially data analysis, advertising, job description, so that hiring people that five months was, you will be a certain point by November, December, January, you know, there's some point where you will have a certain, so that's where that date would be, you know, that date would be, um, you know, it would be driven by a best guess of the reporting, it would be the reporting back to us, you know, that we're ready to launch in this case. Um, so. Right, if I can respond to that. So yeah, the, we do have, um, I believe eight to 10 weeks of training in, uh, included in the budget, uh, because we know that there is, training is a significant portion of what we need to do. And uh, that, you know, there isn't an academy for this and they could not participate. There aren't academies being run right now by, for the police anyway, they're very, they're very, um, they're just not available. So we would be doing a, a specified training that we would learn from other communities, what they've found to be valuable trainings. Um, and so I think the recruiting would be done in the, in the fall winter and hoping to get people up and running and on the payroll in, um, you know, the first quarter of 2022. And Paul, would you just on, you know, um, community college, we've also got stick in Springfield that does tech, does nurses, does several al allied professionals. I think one of these is going to want to develop a program because other areas are talking about this too, that would do, would draw from the fact that they are, you know, so I don't, first year they won't be available, but I think really trying to say, can there be a tailor-made program um, mm -hmm. to this kind of, it's a cross training because um, it's also um, de-escalation skills. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's uh, it's a, communica a communication skill that's different than what you have when you're working in a mental health center or when you're working as a, a social service. Worker. So I'm just thinking that that won't be up and running in year one, but could be by year two if someone knows what we're looking for. Uh, if, yeah. and, and, is what we're looking for. Right. Yeah. And, and I would note that several of our employees on the fire department and the police department do serve, do train people in that regard. They're trained, they're certified trainers who can provide that, those kinds of trainings as well. So what I would propose to do is, uh, uh, before we get to actual motions, see if there's any, um, comment to be offered from people who are attendees because there are several counselors present and, said, and other, as well as other members of the public and uh, if there's no objection from committee I would very much like to uh, see if there's anybody who wants to raise hand who's in the attendee group and uh, be able to offer their thoughts on the discussion that's been going on or anything that else that they have in mind regarding the budget. So anyone in the attendee list wish to be recognized? Um, Athena, can you bring uh, Shalini in and then uh, after Shalini, bring uh, Tony in? Got it. Shalini, hi. Please unmute yourself and. Hi. Um, okay, so my questions were around looking at. Um, uh, why are we not considering contracting out? I was looking at uh, Cahoots and then um, Olympia and uh, Texas Austin or 
I, most of the programs that I've looked at have contracted out. And if we are seeing this is an emergency, we want to start implementing this program as soon as possible. And um, why are we not considering the option of, you know, the training and all like I looked at what, what does the training entail? It's about 500 hours on the field and 40 hours in the classroom. That, I mean, I've read a bunch of different articles and trying to find information. I clearly am not an expert in this, but based on the research I've done so far and reading the report from Safety Working Group and all of the information I have, um, it seems like there is a lot involved. It's not just, right, hiring people, it's the training, it's coordination with the police, um, all of that. So it seems like many of the programs out there that have been very successful uh, contracted out and have you looked at that option thoroughly. The second thing I was looking at is uh, Olympia, which seems like Olympia and Washington seems like a similar size in population, about 55,000 people. They started with a budget of $497,000 plus $110,000 for this program. So with what we're, you know, and and there, um, so I'm just looking at like, when we're looking at our pilot program, this is a pilot. So any kind of new startup that one does, we create a, a pilot program, a pilot product, and we test it out and then we tweak it and build it and so forth, right? So yes, our end goal is to grow it into the full-fledged program, but I think it's reasonable to think that we're not gonna start with a 2 million investment in it. We have to start with a smaller program based on what I'm hearing you say is you're gonna assess the calls from LEAP or other things, find out what it is, create a pilot program, test and tweak it. And the other part is, the ultimate goal, what I'm hearing, is that police calls do get reduced. But in the interim, we don't know what that looks like. So we can't say that we don't need police from next year onwards or we need to reduce police. There is going to be an interim period till we find out what that's going to look like. And I think what I'm hearing from the police, from the community, from the safety working, from Paul, from all of us is we're all on the same page about it that we want this model to succeed. And based on what I've seen in all the other places in the country, this model is successful. So those are my two big questions, I guess. The contracting and the basis for the pilot program. Paul, do you have response? Yeah. So on the contracting, uh, yes. I mean, the COOS program, which is the longest lasting longest program in existence is a contract program mm -hmm. um, and we could learn a lot from them and in fact members of the community safety working group said we should be paying more attention to that mm -hmm. they do a contracting model the the working group had recommended a staffing model which is what we start to build from based on that recommendation you know i am totally open to a contracting model the challenge we have is that um from initial preliminary discussions, we're not sure if there are agencies who are able to take this on as a contract. Um, so I think our default or, or our, the worst case scenario for us is that we hire it and build it ourselves. If there is an option for contracting that meets the town's needs, um, mm -hmm. that's something that we could also do. But I think this is the, um, we should be budgeting, assuming that we have to do it ourselves, but being alert to that there might be another way to do it. Um, and the other question was about um, the piloting. We're yeah. considering the pilot because seeing, uh, you know, seeing Olympia, they started with four hundred ninety-seven thousand, and right, and their police budget now is eighteen million dollars, and their program for this is six hundred and it's increased to six hundred sixty-three thousand dollars. So, what is the basis for our pilot program? So again, th that's an excellent point. I think uh, Denver with their STAR program uh, did a similar thing where they just, they didn't have 24 seven coverage. That's the big chain difference. And here, and even in this meeting, people are talking about the need for 24 seven coverage. And I think there's a reason why 24 seven coverage has been emphasized by the community safety working group in that um, 
they want there to be a dedicated number to the CREST program because they their sense is that there are people who will not call the police and that this will generate more calls independent of the police. And we don't know what that market looks like. It may be a lot, it may be a few. So um, not knowing if there's a, exactly like a transferable number of calls from the police. Um, and, and so um, so I think doing a, a pilot program, I think the concern that, and, and I believe in a pilot program, I talked about proof of concept and things like that during the presentation. But I think from the working group's concern is that if you do it and then someone calls and there's no answer, you're gonna lose that, that person's trust. And so if you don't have it up and running 24 seven, it may not work. Um, and I think that's something we'd really need to investigate. What does that look like? Uh, because I, you're right, we all are on the same page. We want this to succeed. I think everybody wants this program to be designed well and to succeed. Um, I mean, I think there's also something we have to be alert to is that just because you're transferring calls from the police department to a new agency doesn't mean there'll be necessarily a reduction in police officers. Mm -hmm. It's like if, you, if, you, if you're in a school and you lose three kids out of a classroom, it doesn't mean that teacher isn't still needed. There's just fewer kids in the classroom. So until you really are able to reduce staff based on reduction in call volume, um, that's where I'm really arguing against um, reducing the police department's budget at this moment in time. Right. Um, wait, there was one other follow-up question, but I'm forgetting it. So maybe I'll raise my hand again afterwards, if possible. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks. Uh, Tony, hi. Hi, thanks. I just wanted to offer my support to Councillor DeAngelis' stance on identifying the funding now for FY23 for the CREST program and providing clear guidance to the town manager to reduce the police department budget. I support Councillor Shane's proposal to make a motion to hold off on filling vacant police officer positions in order to identify that funding. And then separately, uh, regarding the elementary budget, I would reiterate what I've said in the past about restoring the $75,000 cuts to art and technology teachers. Amherst is projected to receive almost 1.6 million in SR3 funds. That's the uh, elementary school district. And the town will receive many millions in funding, which I understand can be used to replace revenues that were down due to the economic impact of COVID. So it seems it is within the town's uh, ability to allocate additional funding to the elementary schools, which could come with some sort of direction to restore those cut start and technology teachers, even though I understand that school committee has jurisdiction and that they already approved the budget. It's now in your hands and you now have more information that you didn't have at that time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Sean, do you know how the ESSER funds work in response to what Tony just was raising? Um, the ESSER funds, I, I think Tony may have mentioned this, they, they go to the school uh, department directly and the school expends them. Uh, we don't ever see those funds. Um, unlike the municipal money that does come to us and we can choose to grant it to the schools if, if, the, if that's the way we wanna spend the money. Um, but the ESSER funds go directly to the schools. So the ESSER fund, so the schools have the funds and the discretion to make the decision to uh, support the arts teachers that were, uh, she was mentioning the, that the, school decision? Um, we'd want to talk with um, probably the superintendent or the finance director on that one because the, the ESSER funds have different um, restrictions than we have on the municipal side. So there's four eligible uses for the municipal funds. The ESSER funds are completely different. They have... Um, they have other criteria with how they can spend that money. So it, I'm not saying they can't use it for that. I just don't know the answer to that. Um, it's possible, but we'd wanna hear from the schools if they can. And uh, I guess the last piece is, is that the funds uh, that are available to us, which are not ESSER funds or American Recovery Act funds, uh, we haven't engaged in that process yet, but that's outside of the budget. That's going to be a separate process. Yeah, and I think we're planning on bringing something later in June on that topic. So um, there is at least the possibility or the ability to consider it, whether we will do it or not, 
it's a, it could be considered at that point, but mm -hmm. not now. Okay. Um, the two other people, I uh, you know Bernie had and somebody else had their hands up, but we said we were doing public comment for a few minutes. Uh, Bernie, um, could you? I... Just really quickly to, to follow up on Shawnee's comments, um, because I'd also suggested to Paul that we look at contracting this out. Um, Bernie, I think, he, Bernie, I think you said Bernie. Is, is that right, my Andy? Sorry. My apologies. No, I just don't want to. Um... Hang on. Uh, Bernie, could you identify uh, yourself and where you live? Yeah, no worries. We have similar names. Um, I'm Bernie Newman, and I live on Memorial Drive in Amherst. Um, first, I just want to say I really appreciate the movement of public comment to this point, so we have a chance to speak up before the vote. Um, some things I really appreciated about this meeting are, are the counselors um, sort of emphasizing the importance of a 24-7 CRESS program, because to me that feels really key to it getting started successfully. Um, I think this conversation that has emerged on like whether or not to sort of bring um, funds and positions to CRESS from the APD, I think it does make sense to do that. Um, I, my understanding from the community safety working groups work and the research they got um, from 7 Gen Movement Collective is that their idea of um, like putting CRESS together comes with a reduction in the size of the Amherst Police Department and that those things being in tandem is really key to the anti-racism work they're envisioning. I also, um, I believe it was Councillor Andy Steinberg bringing up fears about domestic violence. Um, and I really appreciate your care for victims and survivors and making sure they get the support they need. I wanna note that I think it's 8.5% of Amherst Police Department's calls that involve violence. So I don't think freezing some positions or taking some money away would suddenly um, pose a risk to people experiencing those types of violence. Um, and yeah, I would, I would definitely second Pat's comments about, about this being an emergency and um, sort of trying something that feels different and taking a leap of faith. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Lauren? I want to, uh, Lauren, uh, I, don't tell, tell us uh, who you are and where you live and what's on your mind. Yes, hi. I live um, on, on um, Long Meadow Street on, in South Amherst. And instead of emailing you guys later, I thought I would, you know, speak now. Um, and also as a member and a person of color, I wanted to speak on um, the issue of the Crest services, the alternative services. And I just had two suge suggestions um, that instead of like fully funding the first five months with four people or eight people, um, using that pilot um, pilot time of the first five months to maybe um, incorporate other services like the survival center or um, community connections or the bank center for people to call. And then those calls be transferred to whoever gets hired in those first five months would maybe stretch out the money a little bit and also, um, then you could start full, the fully funded program in January, instead of you know saying that you know you're starting. Um, I guess it, I I don't know when you guys were going to start the pilot program, but in using the first five months as a pilot and then fully funding it um, after that. So that's all I wanted to say. Okay. Well, thank you. It's helpful. Appreciate it. Um, so, Bernie. Okay. Uh, no, it's legitimately my turn. Thank you. Um, to follow up on what Shalini was saying about uh, contracting through a clinic or a, a, an organization like Whitebird, Whitebird brings a real advantage to the program because they have the ability to do um, respites. They have the ability to do uh, to, to provide psychiatric care. They have the ability to um, 
uh, do substance abuse work with people. So that's a problem because you're gonna you're you're, you're gonna run it. You you know having a clinic that has those capabilities already can can really be very helpful to the community. And uh, while I've been disconnected from the social service system for probably 15 years now, I do believe that emergency services in Western Massachusetts are handled uh, for the Department of Mental Health are handled through through clinics and through agencies. So I uh, I wouldn't be um, I wouldn't dismiss the idea of um, looking for a private uh, not for profit vendor to provide this service. Okay, thanks, um, Dorothy. Uh, I'm going back to um, what Tony Cunningham mentioned, which I've brought up before, but I think that we should not forget, uh, which is the funding for arts and technology. And um, I thought of, have thought about this a lot, and I looked amongst things that I save and collect in life. And what they are are the projects that I and my children have made in arts and technology. You know, um, a, a bust of a gym teacher I disliked immensely. That looks a little bit like a witch. And aprons and little metal boxes, ashtrays, racing cars. Those are such precious artifacts. It's when a, a, a young person discovers things about themselves and gets agency by by creating something with their hands and. I, I'm still shocked that that has even been taken, that's been taken off the table. I just see it as so absolutely basic and essential, particularly after the children have suffered so much with online and distance learning this year. So whatever you have to do, I think that money has got to be put back in the budget. Thank you. Thanks, Dorothy. Let's come to that. Let's put off the question of schools. We, we talk, I went through the beginning. Nobody raised questions about schools. I said we'd come back to it if it came up. Uh, but uh, I sort of hate to jump from topic to topic, uh, so I'd rather come back to it um, uh, and stick with where we are right now. Uh, Lynn? Well, I have a motion if we're ready, but if we're not, then we'll hold off. I think at this point, I don't know if Bernie's hand is just up from having asked to say speak before, but I don't see anybody else who's currently, so a motion might move us along. So, so go ahead, Lynn. May I share it on the screen? Sure. So the motion is to recommend to the town council that they approve the FY 2022 operating budget and with an explicit understanding with the town manager that the town manager will find within the approved budget, the funds necessary to fund two additional community responder positions and report back to the town council and residents of Amherst how he plans to accomplish this no later than January 31st, 2022. I'm very open to friendly amendments. So I guess the next thing to ask is uh, whether there's any member of the committee who wants to second that. I guess it has to be a council member. I will second it. Okay, this motion has been made by Lynn, seconded by Dorothy. Is there any, uh, so it's open for discussion on the motion. Let me get back to my participant list. Let's see if anybody has any discussion. Kathy. This is um, Lynn, this is me interpreting what interpreting what you have written here. In the budget that we're looking at right now, there are two positions. So you've gone two additional positions that gets us up to four, correct? In the present proposal, oh, interesting. Thank you, Kathy. I'm building off the proposal and that is not incorporated here. Um, okay, this needs a little more work then. You're right, this does not build, 
This, this builds off of what the town manager proposed last Thursday and also assumes the $90,000 from the state budget. And so this doesn't do it. That's what I thought because I, I you know, what, so my, so let me just say a couple more things. Um, you know, so I think with that 90,000, correct me if I'm wrong, we have enough money to fund six for half of the year. The question is whether we're talking about eight. So I'm not talking about with, you know, whether it's additional or not. So Paul, you originally had two in your budget. Then you came back with four um, where benefits were rolled into them. And so are we talking about two more than what you, you proposed on uh, Thursday night is my question. Or are we, you know, so We're you're- going to amend the budget the way it is presented to us. It actually needs to say six. It needs to say six if we want eight. Six if we want eight, correct? Yes. Right. Yeah. And that's what, you know, I uh, believe me, I have no problem with eight if we can support eight. So, um, uh, everyone else is trying to get me off of trying to find a, an explicit way to fund them, but I want to know we can fund eight. Sean, can I, very nice way, said, hmm, back to the drawing boards here. <laughs> can I just, um, can I add one thing to that? And, and maybe you already said this, I stepped away for a second. Um, when you say within the approved budget, does that include the grant funds or does that not include the grant funds when you say within the approved budget? because I, at least two of the six additional sounded like it would be grant. Okay, thank you. That's the reason I asked for the clarifying because if Paul comes back and I'm, I'm just going, you know, I can't help but thinking FY22 and 23, that's the way I think. I think about a whole program. Um, so are we- um, um, This is about FY22 budget, we can't- you know. No, I know, I know that Lynn, but if we, if we fund it at um, eight, which is what you're doing, two plus, then we need to keep going at eight the following year. I do understand that. I'm just saying that, that we've, we've put a, an explicit number in and then if Paul comes back, on January 31st and said, I have a problem, I can't fund it, then we have another conversation, correct? Right, and we can change this date. I just wanna point out, June 31st will be a new council. Mm -hmm. Could be. Okay, so I have a question, I mean, it's put out right now, and that is that uh, we talked about six, so six additional positions. But we don't. We haven't really funded two positions to begin with. We've set aside some money for Cress, but we, um, I don't think that there was any positions that were assumed to be within those mon that money. So should it be um, with an explicit understanding, the town manager will find within the approved budget and/or with grant funds funds necessary for six community responder positions. I mean, for eight, I, I should be eight. Yeah. Oh, Take the word, eight. And you could also say for eight, up to, you could say up to eight and then take the word additional out, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, additional has to come out. Um, Andy, can I ask a question? Yes. Um, so I understand three because that's three shifts of eight hours. So if you want 24 hours, you hire three people. So two shifts of that is six no. people. No. All know the so what do I what do I not know? Two people for a shift. Yes, two people a shift. I don't see why that's not six. I, I, the, the reason is because, uh, as Lynn pointed out earlier, um, you have to cover weekends and holidays. 
You can't have people working seven days a week. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the rule of thumb is there's 2,080 working days in a year. The rule of thumb is you don't actually have anybody work more than maybe 1,920, but with with these kinds of positions, you need to take time out in addition to holiday, vacation, sick leave, you also have training time. So when you when you take all that out and to cover more than 40 hours a week, <laughs> uh, you, you, you need extra positions. Thank you so much. Uh, it's really helpful to have you explain it. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, Dorothy, uh, I have to ask you, as the seconder of the motion, are you comfortable with uh, the, what's now on the screen? Yeah. Okay, so we do have the motion still on the screen because yeah. Lynn made the amendment to her own motion and the seconder agreed to the change in language. Paul has his hand up. Yeah, and Paul. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think you want to say up to eight. I think your intent is to be at eight. I mean, up to eight means it could be one position. And I don't think that's the intent of your motion. Um, so the one question that Kathy had raised earlier was, do we want to make this jump without at least some level of comfort that Come a year from now, we can continue this program with the number of positions that we've hired and filled. Andy, um, I don't see how you do that without. I, I just don't see how you do that because we can't find next year's budget with this motion. I mean, I understand the problem, and believe me, I have great sympathy for that question. But I don't see how we can do that with this motion. But if we, if you're saying don't tie his hands, um, if we, we think six is definitely doable and we think eight might be doable, I'm just, Lynn, we can't, we can't tell him to fill eight in FY22 and have him say, okay, and I can only do six in FY23. It doesn't make any sense to me. So I just, I really want to know, you know, I understand we're just doing one year. Um, and so, I, so my assumption is that in the budget that the town manager presents to us on or about May 1st, 2022, he will have in it a proposal on how to then move forward. And I, it's not that I don't have a great deal of concern about how we're going to fund this going forward forward. I just don't know how to write a motion that doesn't bind next year's budget. And uh, we don't do multiple year budgets. Paul still has his hand up. Maybe he has a brilliant idea on how to do this. Paul? No, I, I think Lynn is making the point that if you put this this way, you're saying in the budget now before you is four positions, right? Two we have $130,000 in the budget for four positions that equal, equates to four positions in FY22 um, that we can that we can fund out of that those funds. If you're saying eight positions in FY22, that doubles that number. And but you're saying how do we? But but here's my now that I'm looking at this, Paul. I want to build on the plan you gave us the other day. And I want to add two positions, four positions to that. So this motion really doesn't do that because this motion only refers to that community responder line item. So somehow or another, we need to add a phrase or two that adds in the full-time manager and the other necessary funds up to a certain amount. Um, can I put this down for a moment and ask Sean to share uh, what Paul gave us the other day? Sean? 
See, this is what I want plus another 300. No, another, you know, so I can't. I want this number right here, the 4.0 to be 8.0. So maybe it needs to be to increase the line item, but then it, we can't do that because this, I'm sorry for speaking out loud, but this is essentially grant money and $90,000 is also grant money. What, what, I'm sorry, I missed it. Which, which is grant money? This 250,000. Oh, I see, yeah. That's grant money. And then two of these positions is another the state grant money. And then the two more with that you would have to find the money for. So it's almost like we have to calculate for FTE responders, figure out what this total bottom line is and say that this plus grant money will give you this amount. Uh. Sean, if you can give me two numbers, if you can give me the number for the 4.0 FTEs. Um, so just to, I can figure that number out in one second. So you just want to know what the number is for four more responders for five months? Yes, because then all we're going to do is basically say we want to increase that budget line item from 130,000 to whatever the new number is with grant with, you know, I'll, I'll take it. Uh, well, but you can't increase the budget. No, you can't. You have to shift something. I mean, the actions available to the council are to decrease a line item of the budget or to have a similar action that you took last year, which was to request a freeze of positions. Um, and I understand what your intent is to, is to put additional positions into the, the community responder program. I think that's if I'm trying, I'm just trying to understand what the, the goal is of, of the council at this point in time or the finance committee. That's the goal, Paul, but I'm, I also want to keep, I, you're absolutely right, we can't do this. Okay. Put, put, your, Lynn, put your motion back on the screen because I've been thinking about this as we go. And I'll tell you what I'm, what I'm thinking is, is that we did not adopt the, um, nor do I think that we have the authority necessarily or need to adopt the plan that Paul put forward on Thursday. But um, it is kind of the base from which we are working. So we, we could consider that, but what we're essentially saying is that we'll find within the budget and or with grant funds, that he's gonna find the money. Well, he's already found the money to fund some of the positions. The legislature hopefully is gonna come up with a couple of uh, with funds for finding two more positions. So I'm not sure that the that the motion as you've originally written it doesn't do exactly what we want because it doesn't <laughs> doesn't use the language uh, that we're adopting his recommendation from Thursday's meeting, but in effect it is. Yeah, but it doesn't. It, if this motion, first of all, it says adopt the existing budget. That's so we're not reducing it, we're not adding to it. So then, but now we want an explicit understanding that he'll find the money to fund to fill eight community responder positions. But we also want to make sure that the other, the training money and the coordinator position and whatever else was on that page is in here. But didn't he? Isn't this in effect doing that by just simply because it's uh, saying that uh, we're asking that he find the funds necessary to fill eight positions? He's told us how he intends to do four. 
was last Thursday's date. May 27. You know, if, 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 it's, if instead of saying and or grant funds, it said supplemented by grant funds. So the approved budget doesn't have ERA in it, doesn't have the Mindy, if we say supplemented by. So we're voting on the approved budget, but we're also, his slide had another chunk of money. And then I just added this line. Sonia has her hand up. Sonia? Yeah, I have my hand up because I'm totally confused at the moment here. Because this motion is approving the budget, the operating budget. So as it is, the, there's funding in here for the um, for four positions part of the year. We found all the money that we could in this operating budget. So how are we going to say within this operating budget, we're going to find four more? I mean, if you want to put a note that any grant funds available will add four more positions, but that should be part of the operating budget motion. Because you're saying that Paul needs to find four more positions within the existing budget. How is that possible? We would have done that already if it was possible. We, we say approved budget supplemented by grant funds. I understand what you're saying, Sonia. I, I got to explain this to the Department of Revenue, so <laughs> I need to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the problem is, is that uh, we don't know what the final state budget is going to come up with. And will it have that money that uh, Joe's trying to get in the budget for us? This is, this is why know. I thought last year it was actually two final motions, but I guess it wasn't. I mean, the difference between this year and last year is last year, you know, there was a motion to approve the budget and to freeze positions, which is not, which is not that hard to do because they're already budgeted. Uh, whereas this year, I think we're, it's sort of going in a different direction, which I, I worry about a little bit. And I think it's where Sonia's going too, which is now you're approving the budget, but also sort of adding things to the budget, not adding money, but adding um, additional things that we don't know how it's going to be funded and I'm, I'm a little worried about that um, for this but also going forward if that's if this becomes sort of a practice of adding things within the approval um, that we don't actually know where the funding is coming for yet I think you should do a, a motion to approve the budget is and then if you want to do another motion for direction to Paul, that's how I would approach this because otherwise the DR is going to look at this and, I, and ask me, where's the funding? What grants are you looking at? You know, where's the expense side of this? This is, this is like a, a, a accounting nightmare, to put it lightly. So I have raised my hand, but I don't I'm sorry. Go ahead, uh, Dorothy. Excuse me. We can hold off the second part of this motion until we've discussed capital and follow up on Kathy's suggestion about putting off these schematic drawings one year. Then we have a clearer trend as to of, of money and expenses. Are you saying, I'm sorry, Andy, may I ask a question? Yeah. Are you saying that going forward with this motion is contingent upon the capital? Well, I mean, we have to be realistic. Um, maybe we can't. 
everything we said because we didn't anticipate, nobody anticipated this project when the, everybody vowed to do more capital projects. And uh, at some point, something has to give. Um, so I'm just saying that Kathy's suggestion was a reasonable one to me. Um, it's not stopping, but it is uh, putting off. Putting off because we have something we have to do with now. Um, and Sonia's got to be able to know where the money is. If that would uh, be able to be able to do it if we did it that way. Andy, why don't we take this down and I'll work on it while we're looking at the capital budget. Yeah. Um... As you, if you're going to work on it, I, it might be that you're working, looking to language like um, to direct the town manager to seek to find funds to hire um, and then work from that uh, so that he isn't directed to do something and uh, We're, we're uh, it becomes a problem to explain to DOR what happens if it fails. Got it. Yep. Work on it. Take it down. Go on ahead. Okay. Um, Bernie, did you have something else? As I know this year. Just a second, Sonia's suggestion that the cleanest way to do this is two motions. Because once you start saying to find within or supplement this budget or do something else with this budget, and that's going to throw up flags at DOR. So the easiest thing to do is to write the write a motion that, that endorses the, the operating budget and a second motion that says, notwithstanding, Paul, your obligation is to move through and implement this program. This is the desire of the council. Okay, I have something like that. You want me to try it or not? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. So if you're going to keep parallel in, it's recommend the town council direct the town manager, correct? Yes. Okay. Can I offer one additional edit? Please. Um, where it says to seek to find you could probably yeah. just say to seek um, funds or to find funds, one or the other. Alternative funds. I just think we need to say funds. Yeah, I, think, I don't think it is the alternative. You need to find it in the budget or outside. Can I offer one more piece mm -hmm. of feedback? Um, where, so it says to seek funds to fill eight community responder positions and the program as proposed on May 27th, 2021. Mm -hmm. One could construe that to say eight in addition to what was proposed for a total of 12. So maybe change that to four or um, or clarify that the program, meaning like the, like the process and the timeline. Um, you could just turn it around to make it easier. Uh, to... Okay, and other elements. Does that do it, Sean? Yeah, that's fine. Yep. Thank you. 
I don't want to put you on the spot, so the uh, but Pat, your hand was up for a while, and then you didn't, you took it down. But so if you want to be recognized, I certainly will recognize you. I felt I was just supporting the idea of separating the motions, and I was before, and we should vote on the first one before we go any do anything else. So I'm going to make the motion on the first one to recommend to the town council that they approve the FY 2022 operating budget. And this is a substitution. You've, with, it's a you've substitution. asked to withdraw your previous motion. Thank you. I withdraw my previous motion. And Dorothy, well. you agreed to, her, to the withdrawal as the seconder? I do. Am I mute? I'm mute. Yeah. Okay, so me. that's it. So now we have the second motion that uh, Lynn is offering. Uh, is there a second to, this, to the motion to recommend to the town council on the budget? Yes, I second. Okay, Dorothy seconds. Any further discussion on that motion, knowing we're coming immediately to another motion to follow? If not, I'm gonna, uh, if there's no further discussion, then uh, because I need to do roll call, I'm gonna do a roll call of the entire committee. And as usual, um, asking that uh, the resident members of the committee indicate whether they support the motion as, um, as, as it is uh, before the committee. So you're either voting on it or um, as I call on you, because I'm just going to go down the list of uh, resident members, whether they support the motion uh, that's being discussed and voted on. So um, Lynn, you're, uh, you're first on my list. Yes. Dorothy? Yes. Pat? Uh, with respect to Mr. Mangano's and Ms. Aldridge's work, I respectfully vote no. Kathy? Am I voting on the, the double set right now? No, just the one. Which one, the first one? Yes. Abstain. Okay. Um... Bob? Support. Uh, Bernie? Support it. Jane? Uh, I support it. And I'm voting yes. So are we at um, three in favor? One opposed and one abstain, and three resident members um, supporting the motion. I think that's where we were. That's what that's what I recorded too. Okay. So it's so the motion carries. And um, I guess we should go to the second motion. All right, I move to recommend that the town council to the town council. That they direct the town manager to seek funds to fill eight community responder positions and the other elements of the program as proposed on March on May 27th, 2021, and report back to the town council and residents of Amherst how he plans to accomplish this no later than January 31st, 2021. You said 2021 20, or 22? 2022. I'm sorry. Recommend to the town council. Yeah, that's it. Recommend to the town council. Okay, so I need a second. Um, I second it. Dorothy seconds. So we have a motion on the floor. It's been made by Lynn, seconded by Dorothy. Okay. 
And um, any further discussion on the motion? Then uh, I'll start this time. Uh, is sometimes it's a practice in some bodies, uh, like the council. We'll go to the next person in line, Dorothy. Yes. Kathy. Yes. Pat. No. Uh, Bob. Or. Uh, Bernie. With the understandings, this doesn't preclude contracting for the positions. Yes, we support it. Um, see, Pat. I already voted. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's see who, who do I, uh, Jane? Uh, yeah, I support it. And I vote yes. Um, and yes. I, I, I rarely do this, but I'm really uncomfortable with knowing that we, whether or not we can do the vote. So I'm going to change my vote to an abstain. So are we back to? You're, you're going to be three yeses, the same one. Three, three yes, one no, one abstention, and three support. And I guess that I'm going to have to ask uh, Pat either now or subsequent to the meeting to uh, by email just to me then to state what you want to put into the um, report is the reason for your vote. Pat, you want to, I don't, you're muted. Pardon me? You're muted. Uh, yeah, I just unmuted myself. Sorry, Andy. I wish I had an eloquent, eloquent uh, statement to make. Um, I cannot support this budget because it does not do enough to fund the program, um, to start this program. Uh, I think the community has spoken clearly. Um, I just can't. I just can't find a way to do it. I <laughs> maybe I'll be able to type you something eloquent. Uh, I just can't support this. I I believe money should be coming from the police department, and it that is not disrespectful of our department. Uh, there are two empty positions. There have been four empty positions all year, and. We haven't had murder and mayhem all over Amherst uh, because the police department has been down four people. So we weren't asking for a lot when we said we needed to um, move some funds from the police department. So I just can't do it. Uh, I'll, I'll put that into pretty much exact wording unless you send me something else later. Uh, I don't think it will get any clearer. I wish I could say that it would. <laughs> and Kathy, I was, um, don't know if you have anything different to say on abstentions that you've made. No, I, I, you know, I can send you the sentence and it will build on Pat's is that um, I would be much more comfortable if you actually uh, directed where these monies are gonna come from. And I'm particularly concerned about the year after next, even though we are only voting on the current year in front of us. Um, I will comment that my yes vote is a vote of support for the town manager. Um, I believe that he will do what needs to be done. I, I think that we've uh, completed uh, the work on the operating budget and can turn to the 
uh, capital plan uh, unless uh, either Paul or Sean or Son, you have anything additional they want to say. Do you want me to bring up that order? Um, yes. Andy, for the, so yes. there's, again, there, I'll bring up. Unless, unless I see something from okay. you know, yeah. staff that they want to add to it, I think we should go to the uh, capital plan. Can you see the um, see the order on the screen? Yes. Okay. So this is the order for the capital improvement program funding for FY22. And there is also an order for the debt authorizations that are related to this as well. So this is one, and then there's another order um, for the debt. Mm -hmm. Um, is there any discussion on appropriation order FY2205A before I get to motions? I'm not sure that I'm seeing any of them. I guess I'm going to ask um, at this point whether any of the attendees have any questions regard or comments regarding the capital budget. I'm uh, seeing none and seeing I will come back to the committee and see if there's a motion. Uh, Andy, can I just we're voting just on the cash side, not the debt side. The part that I'm concerned about is correct. That. That's a separate order. Okay, thank you. I listen, unless the staff tells me I'm wrong, I believe it's a separate order. No, nope, you're you're right. So, uh, is there a motion regarding the appropriation transfer order FY twenty two oh five A? I move, uh, I'll make a motion. I move that the finance committee recommend uh, to the town council approval of uh, appropriation and transfer order FY22-05A. Is there a second? Second, second. Okay, Dorothy, I believe seconded the motion made by Kathy. No, that was that was Lynn. That was Lynn. I'm sorry. Can't substitute that for the sake for the minutes. Um, any discussion on the motion? It's on the floor. Here, seeing no requests for motion, then I think we can proceed to uh, vote on the, the motion. It's on the floor regarding the financial order for the cash portion of the capital improvement plan, capital budget. And uh, let's see, I'll um, start this time with uh, Dorothy Pam. Uh, yes. Uh, you did, Lynn? Yes. Pat? Yes. Bernie. Guys, yeah, support it. Um, let's see. Uh, Jane. I support it. I, I vote yes. And Kathy? Yes. I think everybody's voted. 
Bob, you didn't get Bob. Oh, Bob, I'm sorry. Uh, I support. Apologize. And uh, so that makes it five to zero. And with uh, three resident members indicating support. So that, Sean, I guess that does bring us to the other motion regarding debt. So Andy, can I just um, speak to this real quick? Sure. Um, so there's five projects, um, A, B, and C are sort of just sort of one year projects, um, two are vehicles and one is uh, a facility improvement. The two that I think were in question are D and E, which is for design and engineering. Um, it's also to fund the, um, the owner's project manager services for these projects because we can't really move forward with, until we get an owner's project manager on board. Um, so these numbers were, we arrived at these numbers by um, looking at the total project budget, estimating um, what percentage uh, that would be for design and then estimating again, what percentage of that would bring us through to bidding. Um, and so, and that's, and that's for design work and OPM for each of these projects. Um, so these numbers were sort of our best estimate at this point. And, um, and again, these would be funded through bond anticipation notes, which are temporary borrowings that can be rolled over year to year until we convert them to a bond. And at that point we would make a principal payment on them and we, we would have to pay short-term borrowing costs in the meantime. You wouldn't incur the, you wouldn't take out the bond anticipation notes uh, immediately, you would take them out when needed. So this is an authorization, but not um, an indication that borrowing will occur until there's a need to expend the funds. Right, we usually will borrow at the end of the fiscal year after the funds have been spent because we need to have the funds by the time we close out the fiscal year. Um, so if we only bar, you know, if we only expended a portion, we would only uh, request a portion. And then if the rest of it was in the next year, we might request additional amount the next year. Um, but we don't, we wouldn't uh, actually borrow any of these funds until we actually spent the money. Okay, Lynn, you had your hand up. Um, yeah, I'm, um... Um, you mentioned at one point that you thought the ERA funding, ARPA funding, might be able to fund the OPM. Is that still your thinking? Um, so that was not the OPM. We we were thinking about that money to support a capital projects manager, which is a subtle difference of somebody on our side that can help manage all these projects um, between the, the library if it gets going, the DPW, the fire station. Um, the school project, and then we also have some infrastructure projects in the um, enterprise funds. And there's lots of projects. There's no shortage of big capital projects going on right now. Um, and so we were thinking of a position that could help manage these, make sure they stay on time, um, you know, try to find ways to uh, reduce the cost or make sure it stays within its budget, um, that type of position to, to take some of the, to absorb some of that burden from all the departments that are managing these projects. And, and that would be a temporary position that would only exist during the life of, you know, this sort of wave of capital projects that we're looking at. And that money is not included here because it's grant money. Right. That would be, if, if that position is um, approved and funded, it would come out of the grant. Thank you. Okay. Are there um, Kathy? Go ahead. Um, Sean, um, you you quickly said bond anticipation notes. The when I look at the line item for debt service, we go from thirty thousand to one point five million in FY twenty three, um, and these two are big items that we would be voting on now to incur that debt. And I know we are just talking about 22, so I don't need to be reminded, but in FY23, everyone should know that operating budgets right now, with the best guess is they're only going up by 
not 2.1, not 2.2, not 2.4. That's where F is. And that extra money, whatever it is of debt, is the difference if I took, is it a couple hundred thousand dollars in short-term interest, we could be at more like 2.2 or 2.3. So I'm really worried about FY23 operating budgets. Um, when health insurance starts going up again, when we have step increases, I don't want to have to um, uh, start as we're coming out, hopefully of a recovery, squeezing um, our schools and our staff. Um, we haven't addressed fire station staffing issues. So I'm worried about, um, I know we gave the town manager instructions, try to find a way to do all four capital projects. We didn't say one has to find a way. I'm worried that we're jumping into all of these in a way that we're going to be mount, mounting up debt. If you're telling me you may not spend $3.4 million, you may not use it at all, then the out year debt service will also go down. So I'm just really worried about bunching them all in the same time period and the commitment that is. So I, I will be voting against this because of those two line items. But I think, um, I think we never had a robust discussion about how one might be able to do it, which is how you came to us originally um, on whether we thought it was a good idea to do it this way. Um, so the squeeze, you've always pointed out FY23 is the squeeze. We're back up to maybe 2.2, 2.4% operating budgets. And yes, if the world turns in a much more favorable, it all may be possible, but we're, we're voting an authorization to move forward in this. And I'm still not sure that DPW, that we don't have a cleanup issue on the site. Um, if DPW moves, no one has told me we won't, and that's even more money. So I, 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 I'm just so uncertain about these two. And then down the road, I'm really worried about elementary school. I know it's an override, but I don't want to send the signal that we seem to have the money for everything but the school and for the school, you have to pay higher taxes. So I am, I, that is why I am voting against the debt authorization. I have no problem with the other items in it at all. Lynn? Yes. Um, am I correct that we are expecting responses to the RFP that is on the street for DBW this Friday? Okay. And based on the response we get could significantly alter the figures because we went out with a very broad set of options, including an existing building, a building for lease purchase or building a building. So I'm a little concerned. I, I, at this point, we're very close to maybe being able to be more specific about DPW. And so we can approve this, but I just wanna say, it, you know, based on the response to the RFP, we could have a serious change. I, Paul or Sean? Yeah, um, I mean, I would just add, I would think regardless of what comes forward, we are probably going to have some design work related to it. I don't, I don't think we wrote, um, we weren't intending for this debt authorization to preclude, you know, if the design was for a renovation versus a new construction or something like that. Or, um, but we, we were thinking we are going to need money if we want to advance these projects in the next fiscal year. Um, for just the same, exactly what Kathy had mentioned earlier about what are the site cleanup issues at the DPW and what those, because it may affect the long-term plan if it's it's substantial, but we're not going to know that until we have the money to really dig into, you know, literally dig into it um, and figure what it is, figure out those answers. Um, so again, the, this money was really to move us forward. Um, the DPW project, you know, we have it estimated for FY23 when debt payments begin. It, it could be a year after that. Um, based on how long it takes, whether it's renovation or, or new construction. So, um, but yeah, this, these funds were not meant to preclude or rule out, um, you know, what options we may get when we open those uh, proposals. And I also assume this doesn't preclude uh, the possibility that Senator Comerford and was, would be successful 
in getting state legislation that would make fire and DPW and other municipalities like a library or a, a school where there might be some state funds that would augment or supplement or, or replace some of the expenditures. We could still go ahead with a proposal as long as we've not started the building. Is that? I don't know if there's enough details about that to know um, how to answer it. Um, just like with the school project, you know, you sort of have to be in their pipeline to and follow their rules. And and I I've heard a little bit about this, but I haven't heard what the funding source would be and and what the rules of the program would be. And um, maybe Paul's heard more about that program. I'm not sure. I, mean, I think we're a ways from that because they both have to get legislation and then appropriate funds into it for, before we'd be eligible for any grants. So. Um, yeah, I, I have not heard if it has any legs in the in the Senate in the, in the House or not. Anyone else? I, yeah, I feel like we've made a commitment to find a way to address five major projects. That, that's been a longstanding um, policy of this council and that uh, authorizing a debt with the debt only to knowing that we don't borrow funds until after we've expended funds and we don't expend funds until there's a uh, basis to do it, that there's a sequence here that we, that's a matter of trust. And I trust uh, our town manager and our finance director and um, our comptroller to uh, manage this appropriately and, is, and they're not going to spend the funds if there's no property in which to do a schematic design they're not going to therefore uh, need to borrow funds um, but that if we get the property that we hope will arise out of this project uh, for this project out of the uh, process that's underway uh, that consistent with the policy of this council that we need to move forward and having the ability to borrow under those circumstances is an essential part of it uh, and I don't see any reason to uh, delay giving that authorization uh, yeah, we could delay giving the authorization until we actually we have to have the property, but I don't think we really gain anything by doing that. So um, that's why I do support this. Um, Dor uh, Dorothy. Um, I, I just want to put in a little caveat here. I don't want us to where we have promised so much money to so many places that we continue to accept new revenue sources, which are buildings which are distressing and upsetting a huge segment of the town. Um, I, I don't wanna be bound to kind of take whatever comes our way because we've already promised we're gonna raise this money. So I'm, I'm beginning to feel uncomfortable. I'm beginning to feel too tight that we're trying to do too much at once. That's it. Um, well, I do. That was part of Kathy's question about sequencing, but uh, sequencing fire down the line is uh, a long way away. I think that the real question is if we find land for the uh, DPW project, the uh, can't imagine why we would not want to go forward as quickly as possible to get a schematic design going and that's what I really feel is the most important one to get going with. Lynn? Neither of my questions suggest I would not vote for this. I will definitely support it. I, Lynn, could you repeat that? I didn't, I didn't catch it. Then you're muted this time. 
my my questions did not suggest that I don't support this. I totally support it. So at this point, um, I think it was um, FY twenty two oh six said the number on it. Yes, FY twenty two oh six is the bond authorizations. So, I, so we can make a motion. Yeah. Uh, one second. Prepared to make a motion if you're ready. Just go ahead. Uh, I recommend that we recommend to the town council um, the approval of. Um, Appropriations and Borrowing Authorization Order FY22-06. Okay, I'm gonna second the motion just to keep this process moving. Um, Dorothy, your hand is, is up still. Was that from before? Do you have something to add? Nothing to add. Okay, so there's a motion on the floor. Um, I'm pausing to see if there's anybody who is going to seek recognition for any purpose, either to speak or to offer an amendment to the motion. And if I hear none, then I'm going to call for a vote. Okay. So at this point, then I will call for a vote and uh, see. I'm gonna just go up to the top again. It's easier for me to do it that way. Uh, Dorothy, uh, abstain. Lynn, yes. Kathy? No. Pat? Yes. Bob? Support. Bernie? Support. Jane? Jane, you're muted at the moment. Okay. I still haven't heard uh, that Jane supports. Um, I vote yes. Wanted to give Jane an opportunity. Because right now I, th I think that we are three, one, one. John, Jane, are you? Um, can you hear me okay? Now I can, yes. Okay, I, I support. Okay, so we have three members, resident members supporting, three voting yes, one voting no, and one abstention. So the motion carries, which then brings us to one additional agenda item if we are able to discuss it. And I actually have to go back and take a look at the uh, agenda itself to see how whether we can actually do this. Um, and that is the question of whether we can uh, follow up on our discussion from the last meeting about uh, a report to the council on reparations. I think that I have something from Sean, which I will read regardless, but I wanted to get this. We put, um, it's not explicitly on the agenda and uh, 
So I'm not sure that we can handle a motion on it without, unless Athena agrees that it was not anticipated 48 hours in advance. The last discussion was on the afternoon of Thursday, which was, uh, I believe, after the posting deadline for this meeting. So, I think, yeah, I think Andy, if you're gonna, if you expect to have a, a, a thorough discussion about it, then I would say that so that we can post it on an agenda and alert the public that you'll have that conversation. Which would leave it that we, um, Sean? Yeah, um, so I think we have to have at least one more meeting after the Capital Improvement Program Forum um, to probably follow up on that. But also there's a optional tax exemption. That's sort of a routine thing we do every year that has to be approved before June 30th. Um, and we could also add this item um, so it'd be, it would be whatever date we can agree to, I think, after June 7th. I'm not sure if we have a date scheduled yet, um, but we could address this one at that same time and get it to the council before they um, vote on the 21st. So uh, to Lynn, who's in her role as council president, we had a motion from the council requesting that we report back. We can report on a discussion, but we cannot report on a position because we will not have a motion. And I'm hmm. gonna just tell you, uh, based upon our last discussion and uh, uh, with Sean's help, thank you, Sean, uh, what we came up with was um, the following, that we would um, be considering the creation of a stabilization fund uh, to, in June 2021 by the council, uh, the stabilization fund uh, would uh, be in order to create a new reparation stabilization fund. Secondly, that um, we would seek to transfer approximately $206,000 from Fiscal year 22 reserves, do I, um, if I don't have this right, Sean will correct me, transfer approximately $206,000 from FY22 reserves to the new stabilization fund. This would occur in the later fall when the town transfers free cash over 5% of the regular stabilization fund. Uh, and the council of course would have to approve that transfer at the time um, in the and it would have to be initiated by a town manager uh, initiate would, would have to request the transfer. And then the third was that no funds would be expended from the um, uh, stabilize it, the, the new stabilization fund until the town receives legal guidance on allowable uses. And that's is a summary of where we ended up last time. So, yeah. Andy, I think you just report on the progress and then say that by the 21st we'll have a motion. I think that's fine. I, I think that's where we are. Uh, so I will, uh, can I, is there anybody else who has anything to say on the subject or uh, we will uh, write a memorandum on that, a report on that piece, which I probably will do as a separate report from the report that we're doing, that I'm trying to get together on the other. Paul, you have your hand up. Yeah, so for your next meeting, we can provide some background information and the, a sample motion that I think you, that you're referencing that would give more context to the finance committee as you consider the idea of reparations. I'm just curious when you think that might come up on uh, on your next, when, when will your next meeting be on this topic? We will discuss that momentarily. Okay. Um, anything else that anyone has uh, 
from the council. And uh, I'm going to go back to the attendee list for just a second. So I think, yeah, Michelle is in the audience. Uh, so if she raised her hand, I would recognize her. Uh, having said that, I think that uh, at this point, uh, what we need to do is schedule the next meeting and then I'm going to tell you where we are, where I am with the report. And uh, it's been a struggle, but I'm getting there and I appreciate everybody doing their, uh, their piece with it. Um, so next meeting, Sean, you had a date in mind you were suggesting? Uh, there's a couple. So um, if we wanted to stick to Tuesdays, we could do the 8th or the 15th. I'm not sure if there's any conflicts on those days. Um, I'm just looking at my own calendar. Yeah, I have a conflict on the 15th. Okay. I've got a, my wife has an appointment, medical appointment in Boston that we scheduled long, long time ago. So Unfortunately, I can't break that. I also have a conflict on the 15th. CRC is meeting on the 15th. Paul, can, do we know when the um, optional... No, I'm sorry, that's the 8th. Sorry, Athena. I'm sorry. CRC is meeting on the 8th. Okay, right. Okay. Um, two o'clock on the 8th. That works for me. Uh, it, CRC is CRC. meeting at 2 o'clock on the 8th. Right. Oh, CRC meets on the eighth. Yes. So yes. both of the both of those Tuesdays are not possible. What about Thursdays? The tenth and the seventeenth. Yeah. Yeah, I have a conflict on the seventeenth, but I'm available on the tenth. For me, I will not be in town on the seventeenth, but I'm available on the tenth. The the tenth will work for me. Um, I'm doubtful about the uh, the next. Uh, the next week, the tenth is is good. Pat, can you unmute for a second? <coughs> um, the tenth works, but the seventeenth would have to be earlier than. Uh, so I would have a hard stop at four o'clock. I think that where we're at is the tenth because uh, uh, several people have said that the seventeenth won't work. Okay, so that's I had to go get my calendar. The tenth no, works fine. fine. I'll, I'll work. To, I'll work in well. I'll and try to make. Mean, I'll try to see if I can move an appointment on the tenth. I'm fine with the tenth. So, Lynn, do you want us to? I have an appointment on the tenth, but I'll see if I can move it. Okay, so um, our plan right now is to meet at two o'clock on the tenth and to. Um, you, you'll be able to provide the additional pieces that we need to finish our business. Are you asking? Um, yes. And I just wanted to ask one quick question. Um, I think of Lynn. Lynn, do you know, is the optional tax exemption going to come up at council before the 10th so that when it gets referred, we can address it on the 10th at finance committee? I can't remember. Happen. Okay. We can, we can make that happen. Athena, we just have to add that to the... We, we already have it on our draft agenda, Thank Lynn. It's, okay. it's, on, it's on consent. Thank you. Perfect. Thank right. you. See, you really need to ask Athena about this stuff. <laughs> okay, so uh, and, we have two o'clock on the 10th. Paul has his hand up, Andy. Yeah, Paul. So on the agenda on the 10th will be reparations, optional tax exemptions. What else um, do we want to talk about? There was one more. Oh, if, I, if there was any follow up from the capital improvement um, program forum. Mm -hmm. The forum will be on the 7th. Got it. The third quarter report. Oh, yep, perfect. But I won't be here, Sean. Prepared to do that? <laughs> Holly will be here. We can have Holly here. Yeah. We, we can do the estimate for Lynn's surplus for this year. 
<laughs> of the third quarter. I started looking at it. It's it's sitting there for us to see if you take it out a quarter. <laughs> okay, so I think with that, um, we've completed our business. We've done a lot. We do not need to meet tomorrow then. Dorothy's hand is up. Yeah, Dorothy. Now I was going to talk about uh, the, uh, just tell you where I'm at with the report, but Dorothy. So it was, I thought we had a meeting tomorrow saying we don't have, we don't need to do it. Okay, great. I think Thank we you. don't need to do it, um, but look, before I say that for final, um, what I was going to try and do is uh, complete the report. I've been struggling along with some final editing on the various uh, reports that I've received from all of you and with, with much appreciation and one piece to write and obviously have to write up, um, add the pieces from today. Um, I could, um, I, my inclination would be to just send it to the committee and ask for comments back to uh, just two of us, to me and to Kathy as vice chair, but, uh, if we people would prefer to have a meeting to talk about the actual wording of the report, um, then we would. It, there isn't. Gonna, it's going to be real a squeeze on time, but we could do it. And uh, could have a meeting. I prefer responding via email to you and Kathy, than meeting again. My voice of support and trust. Okay, so we will uh, we will not meet tomorrow, and uh, Kathy and I will make I'll do our best to get a report of some sort into the count. Um, and what we're going to do in order to meet deadlines is that the reports will be emailed tomorrow and sent um, to to the town council and uh, posted. Uh, by Athena. Uh, the acceptable process. So then anything I'm missing uh, that I didn't anticipate 48 hours in advance or otherwise. Uh, seeing uh, that there's none, I think that we are adjourned. I thank you very much. This has been a not an easy meeting, but it was a very productive meeting. So thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Nice day. Thank you, Andy. Thank you.